video, I'm going to look at drawing isomers from a molecular formula. Okay. Now, isomers are different molecules that have the same formula. We'd know they're a different molecule because they would have uh, a unique name. Two molecules that look different but would be named the same way are the same molecule. They're just a rotation or flip of the same thing. So I'm going to start off with C6H10 and start drawing many uh, isomers of this. Now I don't want to just start randomly thinking about uh, trying to draw all the ains, trying to draw all the enes, trying to draw all the ines, and then trying to draw the cyclos. Okay? I want to use a uh, generic formula to narrow this down. So thinking of what pattern we have, uh, we have a C, N, H, okay, what's this pattern? We go from 6 to 10. I always start with doubling it. If we double the carbon count, we'd get 12 H's. So we're less than that. We're less than double. We are double less 2. So then we want to think of when do we have that pattern? Uh, Anes. Anes are C, N, H, 2 N. So there's no way uh, we could draw any ane isomers. Okay? We just don't have enough H's. Same with enes. Those would be 2n hydrogen count compared to carbon count. Uh, ines are 2n minus 2 hydrogen count. So that's a possibility. Cycloanes are just a 2n hydrogen count. So that wouldn't work. Uh, but a cycloene is a 2n minus 2 hydrogen count. So we have two possibilities to think about in this example. We'd want to think of what ines we could draw and think of what cycloenes we could draw. Now I always like to tackle this systematically if I'm trying to get them all. I'm not going to get all of them in this video because there's going to be a lot of isomers, but I will at least get the pattern started. And you'll get to see lots of examples. I always start with the longest chain first and do every possibility of the longest chain and then work my way to the second longest, third longest. So we have six carbons, so I'm going to draw a hex stem. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's my hex. I need it to be an ine, and I will start with putting a triple bond in the first position. Okay. Now, in this video, instead of writing all the hydrogens in, I'm just going to put a dash. It really slows down uh, the writing. So I'm going to put a dash there, but there should be one hydrogen at the end. My second carbon has no other hydrogens required because it has four bonds. My third carbon would require two H's. So I'm just going to put two dashes, two H's needed, two H's needed, and three H's needed. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dashes. Ten H's would go there. Everything's matching up. So that's my first potential isomer, my first isomer of C6H10. It's not the only hex ine. That's hex one ine, but I could have easily have moved the double bond over one and make a hex two ine. And that would be a distinctively different isomer. It's a different molecule. So that's my, this is my second carbon to carbon bond. This being the first, this being the second. Okay. Again, I'm not going to draw all the H's, I'm just going to put dashes in. A lot of students put dashes in when they're practicing, doing workbook and homework questions. Make sure you can get to an assessment that you put the H's in for a proper structural diagram. If I move over one more and think if that's a unique structure, it is, I could have a hex 3-ine. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. First bond, second bond, there's the third bond. I'll make a triple. And this is actually going to be the very last hex line I can draw. I cannot move it, the triple bond, to the next position over. Um, because if I move it over to here, it's really one, two from the shortest side. So it would be repeating this isomer that I already did. It would look different on paper, but when I go to name it, I'd get a, a, the same name. So we have our hex 1 ine, 2 ine, 3 ine. Okay. 
That's it for the six carbon long potential example. So then I'm going to move down to five. Five carbons. I need to have a branch because I need a sixth one. So I'm going to start by putting in my triple bond. So it's an ine, and then think where can I put that extra carbon as a methyl group? Well, it can't go at the very beginning because it would become part of the longest chain, and it would be this example. We can't put it off the second carbon because it has four bonds already. So I could put it off the third carbon. One, two, three H's, H down there, H at the end, no H's on this carbon, two H's and three H's. So we've got our five carbons, that's a pent, pent one ine, and a three methyl. One, two, three carbons methyl, so three methyl pent one ine. Now there's another isomer we can draw of a pent-ine, pent-1-ine. Uh, I can move this methyl group over one to the fourth position. So there's two, three, four, five carbons, and I could put the methyl there. Very similar structure, but not identical. Uh, that's it for the five carbon long examples. I can't move it to the end because it would become part of the longest chain. Okay. Next, I'm soon going to stop. You can see the pattern, do all the, the sixes, do all the fives. Next, I would do all the fours. And at some point, you'll find that you just can't put it together. You can't get octets. Uh, so I'll put a triple bond there in my butte one ine. Now I have two more carbons to add in. I can't add it here, uh, that would be the end. This carbon has no bonding capacity left. This carbon luckily has the two bonding capacity spots that we need. And there's our 10 dashes for a 10 hydrogen. And this is the only possible four carbon long um, isomer that we could have. We can't move any of these carbons to the end. Uh, if you keep going, you'll find that you're not going to be able to make any isomers with, car with just three carbons long. Uh, so that's it for the straight chains. So now I will just do a couple of the cyclos. So cycloene. Again, it doesn't mean that all of the um, carbons are in one ring. We could have a six-membered ring, a five-membered ring, a four-membered ring, uh, potentially a three-membered ring, though uh, triple bonds tend not to form three-membered rings. Um, so the first example, starting with the biggest stem, would be six carbons in a ring. And I need a double bond doesn't matter where I put it, it's a ring, and when you have a ring, a double bond will always be in the one position. Uh, putting in the hydrogen, let's start here. This carbon has one, two, three bonds already, so it needs a fourth. All our other carbons without that double bond are going to need two more H's. And then we get back here where we need just one. Uh, this will be the last isomer I'll draw, even though there's many more. Uh, that's the only six-membered ring I could do. I'll drop to a five-membered ring. I'll stick that double bond on the top. So I'll do a pent, a cyclopentene. And I've got one carbon to add in, and I will start right next to the double bond. This would be in the one position. This is the first bond. And then I need to start numbering my carbons and go across the double bond. The shortest way to go across the double bond will be that way with putting this as my one carbon and that as my two carbon. This would then be my three carbon. This would be my two bond. Now I'll put in the dashes for my hydrogen. And there's going to be a lot of cycloisomers that you could draw. So hopefully this tutorial helps you with drawing isomers. 
on tests, you will find that we can't make the hydrocarbon very big because the isomer count will get incredibly large uh, very quickly.